Amr Abdul Aziz from uh, Al Quds city, and um, um, I want to uh, thank you all and greet you all for the, uh, this work that you are doing for the uh, sake of the uh, Palestinian prisoners and uh, their case. Um, I'm a, a blind person. Um, in the uh, in the year 1996, I was still able to see a little bit to a, a very limited uh, extent. Uh, but I was arrested and uh, tortured for more, more, more than one month. Then I was uh, uh, terribly, in fact, tortured until I lost my uh, sight totally. And I was released to uh, a house arrest for uh, two years. Um, I'm naturally against occupation, against discrimination, against uh, um, all kinds of uh, oppression and manipulation of people and enslavement of people. Um, so this is what uh, provoked the Zionists against me. Until um, in the year 2004, on the 27th of September, um, it was only by a sudden that uh, after midnight they attacked my house and a number of uh, uh, the houses of uh, uh, other neighbors and uh, they broke down uh, everything, the, the, the walls and, and, and the doors and the windows of the, of the, the house and they shattered um, glass and metal everywhere and uh, they broke into the house and terrified my kids and my wife um, at night and, and then they put the handcuffs in my hands and the uh, restrictions in, uh, uh, in my legs and uh, they pulled me to a nearby uh, by, um, hill and there they began to uh, terribly torture me and uh, insult me with the, uh, the filthiest words and, um, and they began to kick me in the, uh, in the military vehicle um, at the same time, um, the handcuffs and the restrictions were very, very tightened on my hands and on my legs until um, uh, my hands began to bleed and I began to lose feeling and the uh, sense in, in both hands. And I shouted at the uh, soldiers that uh, I want uh, the handcuffs at least to, to be released a little bit because uh, the blood was uh, prevented and uh, um, I felt that uh, my hands were uh, paralyzing. Um, so uh, they began to, to laugh and, and mock me and they said that uh, they did not have the keys. The keys are with the uh, military officer who went to uh, uh, search my house. And in fact, he was demolishing uh, the furniture and uh, my academic work and my personal computer and everything inside the house. And after hours, um, he came back and uh, he put his uh, gun in, in my chest and uh, said that ideas are uh, more dangerous than weapons. I said to him, yes, I ha I'm an intellectual person, an academic person, and uh, we, I believe in uh, civilized thought and uh, dialogue and interactions um, and cultures. I work on uh, cross-cultural uh, works, um, and uh, I said to him, he, he believes in, in violence and torture and weapons, and uh, as an example, they were torturing me, and uh, I, I gave him the, 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 the very same example, that I, I, I've, I was being tortured, and uh, the, the, with the handcuffs tightened, or tightened on my hands, and he said, you, um, he threatened me, he said, you will see soon. And uh, they took me to Al Maskubiya, which is uh, the detention center known to the Palestinians as uh, the butchery because they, t they, they are terribly tortured in that uh, center. Um, uh, from the very first moment, they began to also to insult me and use the filthiest words against me and against the Arabs and the Palestinians and sometimes even against the Islam and the Prophet Muhammad And uh, then they forced me to undress by force. 
other fuels, then the, uh, they 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 just took me from my hands and my legs and and pulled out my clothes by force, and uh, they they claimed that they they wanted to search me, and uh, after that, uh, they began sometimes to uh, uh, shackle my hands and legs to to a small leaning chair that keeps the body sliding forward until I be also began to, to bleed. And uh, sometimes they uh, just pushed me and uh, um, hit me on, on, on my head and on, on my chest. Um, they, I, I wanted to understand because I did not know for, for what reason all of that thing was going on. And uh, after some time, they uh, claimed that I was uh, visualizing and uh, guarding a group of Palestinians um, uh, who went out to carry out a, a military operation. And I asked them where, where I did that and, what, and how come that I'm a blind person? How can I do that? And he, they said that I did that at my house. That, that was really very, very strange. For whom do I visualize and guard people at my house? For what reason? And uh, um, after that, uh, I felt that it wasn't at all a kind of interrogation. Uh, they were using me, on, in one case, as a, uh, a guinea pig of experiment. And sometimes they, they just torture me for saddest reasons, for race, racist reasons, for, for, uh, uh, for because of my intellectual um, uh, uh, character. So um, they shackled me at uh, one of the chairs in one of the cells and they shackled my hands and legs to, to that chair. And they directed that beam of very, very, very painful uh, ray right into my head. And I can never forget that suffering. It went on for hours. I had terrible headaches and pain in, inside my head. And they kept pushing uh, that uh, gray inside, trying to move as if trying to move something inside my brain. In another case, uh, they took me to uh, another cell and they shackled my hands and legs again. And they began to make uh, very, very loud, uh, painful uh, sounds from all directions. And uh, what I understood from that uh, experiment as well is that they were trying to break me psychologically. Uh, because when I uh, tried to uh, concentrate in one direction to uh, focus on the source of the sound, uh, the, the sound came from the opposite direction. And I kept trying to uh, figure out from the uh, backward, the frontward, and <coughs> left and right. It was so terrible. And then after that, they took me to another cell, that solitary cell. Um, that was uh, very, very terrible. I spent about 35 days. Um, the cell um, did not have any mattresses, did not have any clothes. It was very, very wet and cold. It has a, a two-story um, iron bed. Um, the bottom one has literally a pool of water on it. And the upper one was wet, but without a, tool, a pool of water. And. Uh, when I wanted to sleep, I had to sit on the upper one and, uh, and relax. But in fact, I could not sleep. I did not know anything about the time. It was so tragic. It was so tragic and painful. I did not know if it is day or night. At the end, they came to me and they said, I had a visit and I did not know what that means because I've never visited anybody and nobody visited me before. So when they took me out of the cell and pulled me, in fact, after them, one of the prisoners uh, saw me and he began to cry like a child. And, and I just not remember the name of that prisoner because I asked about him afterwards. Um, they took me, uh, in 
fact, yes, they took me to a visit. Uh, and uh, I hear the voice of my mother from behind the bars and the, uh, the glass. There were very small um, openings, and very small holes in, in the glass. But I did not want her to see me at all because I did not want to shock her. Um, she wanted to see me, but uh, alhamdulillah, the, 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 there were screens of metal and bars and glass. She, she could not see me, but she heard my voice. Um, and I told her that um, I want a lawyer and I'm, um, I was still alive, but she said that the, 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 you are not allowed to have a lawyer at that time. Um, seven life sentences plus 30 years, because they believed that I had uh, visualized and, uh, and, and watched for a group of Palestinians who went out to Israel to make a uh, military operation. This is what they claimed. And uh, they did not have any proof against me. Uh, they only used a, a secret file, they call it, a secret file that's given to the judge. And uh, he's not a judge anyway. We just uh, maybe call them judge, judges, but they are not. They're, they're really uh, criminals themselves, and they, they only do what the uh, security system tells them what to do, because they give them the secret file, and this, secret, this uh, file um, is not disclosed to anybody, even to the lawyer, is not allowed to see what is going on in that file. So uh, at the beginning, there were through, uh, three uh, the so-called judges. One of them uh, said that I was uh, totally innocent and he did not believe the story of the security. And two of them, um, uh, one of them uh, read my file and accused me and the other one just voted with the one who accused me and therefore they sentenced me. So I went to an appeal to the uh, so-called high court uh, in Israel. It wasn't a court at all. Um, I paid so much money, about 30,000 US dollars. And then after that, um, the, the lawyer, uh, he just uh, made everything, but they did not discuss anything. They, they just said, um, after um, two or three sessions, they said that uh, nothing has changed and uh, I will have the same sentence. Um, so, so it wasn't at a court at all. These are not prisons. These are places where people are concentrated for torture and for slow death. And sometimes they punish us with, by preventing our, our families from, to visit us. It's a, it's a place that at this moment I can't bear the feeling that I, at this moment I remember that there are some people who are in solitary cells for now for about 14 years. One of them from Jerusalem, his name is Mahmoud Isa. And other people uh, who are now suffering because uh, of their wounds and their, their diseases. And uh, others, they go and search around for just a piece of bread or a, one egg or something like that. They're, they're really, and they, you know, in, in, in prison, the prisoners, they try to help one another. But how can you become a physician, a psychologist, or a, uh, someone who wants to help someone who is detached from his family and his kids, or who heard about his parents who, who died? Or, um, it's, a, it's a situation that, uh, makes someone wait, wait for a day possible, either to die or to get a miracle to get you out of prison. Such criminals have full power, absolute power to do whatever they want to do. They believe that they are above the law and nobody in the world would hold them accountable for their crimes. So uh, they believe that uh, 
all the crimes that they do against the prisoners, the world would not know about it. And they isolate the prisoners. And I hope that uh, you will get uh, the message uh, and convey to the world because I myself, I feel that uh, I owe so much to those prisoners who, uh, whom I knew about their situation and I got the same experience. So how can I um, um, just uh, uh, tell their voice and, their, and they, um, um, make the, the, their, their message known to the, to the world? It's so tragic. It is not. Uh, the, 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 the Israelis, they just rely on the thing that they, nobody knows and nobody would uh, uh, inquire and nobody would hold them accountable for such crimes. They told us so, so many times. They said to me that even if I die in, in prison, I would never be released. My body would remain there. And I said to them, Alhamdulillah, I will be released. And you will be, and you should be, should be, and you deserve to be in prison. And Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm released. And uh, Inshallah, justice will prevail. Inshallah.